Greetings. Joseph Kursky here with you to talk about what is georeferencing and also how to georeference an image in ArcGIS and then how to serve up or publish that georeferenced image inside ArcGIS Online. Let's get started. First of all, we need data. My colleague and I have a whole site called the Spatial Reserves Data Blog, where we talk about sources to obtain geospatial data through, and also how to know if those sources are any good, how to assess data quality. In this case, I've done my research, and I know that the Pennsylvania State Data Center, or PASDA, was one of the very first sites for serving up spatial data. They've been at it a long time, over 20 years. I'm going to go ahead and download the Pennsylvania local roads. And to do that, I'm going to the pasda.psu.edu site. So as the name implies, it's served up by Pennsylvania State University. Good folks there. And I'm going to bring that into my local device. I'm going to unzip that file containing the local roads, and then I'm going to add it to ArcGIS Pro as you see me do right here. I'm going to go ahead and insert a new map and I'm going to insert a new map that's going to contain the data for the local roads for Pennsylvania. Now you might ask, well why Joseph do you need some local roads? I would like to have another source of data, not just the base map to geo-register to, just in case I need it. So as you can see I've unzipped the file, I've got all kinds of data in here, it's a shape file, and I can look at the different local roads of Pennsylvania. I only need the piece of terrain that covers State College, Pennsylvania, but I like to look at, for example, the projection information. In this case, it's stored in a PRJ file, and it gives me the spatial coordinates for that particular data set. So having done my homework and having looked at it, I understand what I need to project it from and what I need to project it to. Of course, it's my choice to project it to, in this case, I'm going to project it to state plane coordinates, as you will see, because I might have some other local data that's also in state plane. There's my shape file. I'm going to go ahead and add it all of Pennsylvania. It's all the local roads. So it's not state highways or interstate highways. It's just local roads, which is exactly what I need, because the Sanborn map that you saw me examine in the last video contains the local streets for a section of State College. I'm going to go ahead and import that shapefile into a geo database. Now you may wonder, well, why do that? It's already a shapefile, you can already display it. True. It's always best practice, though, to put your vectors into a geo database. It's more efficient in drawing, it's more efficient in your analysis, and so that's what I'm doing here. I'm putting the data into a geo database. Okay? Having done that, now I'm going to import the feature class into the geo database. So I've got my local roads. It's going into my geo database. And I'm going to name that feature class Pennsylvania Local Roads, indicating to me that it covers the entire state. But I'm just going to, again, be looking at one local area. I'm going to run that. And now I'm going to have the data from the PASDA site local roads inside a feature class which is inside my geo database which is inside my ArcGIS Pro project. Now I'm going to zoom in to the study area in which I'm going to georeference my historical map. One way to do that is to use the locate tool and I'm going to locate my study area here. It's so nice to have these geocoding and georeferencing tools at our fingertips. Using the World Geocoding Service, I can find State College, Pennsylvania in no time at all. And I'm going to zoom into my study area as you see me do here. I'm going to project the data that I've just imported into state plane coordinates because I have some other data later on that I want to georeference to this same coordinate system because it's just the zone that I'm interested in in Pennsylvania. So state plane is a logical choice for me because I have other data in that coordinate system that I want to bring in and analyze. So state plane, it's nice to be able to have thousands of projection types at your fingertips here. Checking the metadata one more time. It's nice to be able to search for the projection that you want because there are thousands of projections in there. So having looked at the metadata, I find that I want to go to Pennsylvania State Plane Coordinates. Now which zone do I want? I'm going to have to check some other resources to find out what zone I want. I've got Pennsylvania North and Pennsylvania South. 
So what do I do in this case? I look at some other sources. Conveniently, there's a hub site for state plane zones. And if I zoom to Pennsylvania, I'm going to be able to see that the line going dividing Pennsylvania in the north and south zone actually goes just to the south of State College. So that central county in there is actually in the north zone. So now I know what zone for my projection that I need. I need the Pennsylvania north zone. Go ahead and run that projection command, that projection tool. One of the things I like about Pro is that it has all of the analysis tools under the tools toolbox. So you can find any tool that you need by searching or going in the traditional directory tree, but I usually use search to find the tool that I want. And now I've got that data projected. Just checking some base map information to make sure that my study area is the one I want. I'm going to now insert a new map. I like to do this after I've projected data so that I know that all of the data that I'm using inside a map is in the, in the projection that I want. So my new map, I'm going to actually insert that data into a new map. And by default, whatever gets placed first into a new map, in the old ArcMap days, it was a new data frame. But in the new, in the new map here, it's going to be state plane coordinates, Pennsylvania North Zone. So I'm checking to verify that, indeed, these different maps have a different projection on them. Let's save our project now. Now I've added my unregistered image, my historical map image, for the study area. And just verifying, if I zoom to layer, notice that it was way off because it's indeed unregistered. So I like to verify that, that I make sure that I'm using the unregistered image. And I zoom to it, make sure it's unregistered before I bring it in and register it with the georeferencing toolbox. You have to click on the image and then use the georeferencing toolbox, which has a set of tools in it. We're going to set the spatial reference system and notice that it is indeed state plane, Pennsylvania North, as I indicated earlier, and as I specified earlier, using the project tool. I fit to display, and this is where you really have to know your data. You really have to be familiar with where this image sits so that you can intelligently add control points to it. I would also highly caution you to pay attention to this transformation. You may t be tempted to think that more is better, but if you apply, for example, a six point polynomial transformation, and as you can see here, I've got this image now sort of twisted. The streets are no longer straight it's just better to reset and start over. So let's take it from the beginning. Add control points and you're going to go from your unregistered image or map to your geo-referenced or geo-registered in a known coordinate system data. So it's from to. So each time you can see that I'm toggling on and off that image. There's also some shortcut keys if you look at the help you'll be able to do some shortcuts. But right now I've got five points on there from two each time. I'm gonna add the sixth one here from and two, and that's looking pretty good. I'm not laying any, let's look at the control point table there. That's a good thing to do. I'm not laying any fiber optic cable or anything like that. And you can see there, if I apply the wrong transformation, it's gonna be all twisted. You can look at what you are doing here and pay attention to the kind of transformation that you're doing. So, okay, um, it's looking pretty good. Again, I'm not laying any cables or doing any high uh, precision surveying here for the purposes of my demonstration of change over space and time. I'm look, I think it's looking pretty good. In the upper right of your ArcGIS Pro screen, you'll see save and save as new. First, take a look at your control points in your table. Look at your residuals and see if they're going to meet your project requirements. Save will overwrite your image. Save as new will basically export your image into a new image that has the coordinate transformations in it. So they're both useful. It's just what are your goals and so on. The nice thing about just saving is that you can go back in as I'm doing here and say, ooh, my image is not quite as accurate as I would like it to be in terms of being geo-registered or geo-referenced. 
So I want to add a couple more control points and I can do that. Once I do save as, it's going to export it to a new file and I can't really do anything with that. I can't tweak it and adjust it if you know what I mean. So what I want to do is, is keep saving and I can do that for a bunch of images and then I can keep coming back to those if I need to adjust them further. So that's nice. It actually writes this little ancillary file that keeps the control points and then again you can go in and edit those and make your images all the better depending on your project needs. So that's save and save as new. Something to definitely keep in mind. You can also export the control points into a file for further use. Let's take a look at this export raster. This is save as new. So let's say I want to truly export this into a geo referenced raster. What's really important here folks, you take a look at these cell sizes and the extent. Now right now in my case if I just say the default and take these point two and point it's going to it's going to export the whole state of Pennsylvania and it's going to fill up my whole hard drive. That's that's definitely not what I want. So I want to make sure that I'm going to say current display and then I'm going to look at the coordinates. I'm going to raise the display here so you can see the coordinates. Remember this is state plane coordinates so I'm verifying that the left, right, top, and bottom is truly the coordinates that are going to give me just this area of Pennsylvania which is just about a what a six block by six block, 36 square block area inside State College. That's something that is incredibly important to pay attention to when you're doing the export is look at the extent, look at the cell size, and make sure you're not exporting a lot more than you think you're exporting. Sure, you may just have your image clicked on as I have in the table of contents on the right, but that doesn't mean that's the only thing it's going to pay attention to when you do this export. I know it sounds a little crazy, but please be careful there when you're exporting. I'm going to take a look now in my catalog pane to see where that data got written to. And I'm also going to check the metadata on it and the source. Is it inside the geodatabase? Some people write to files inside their geodatabase. Some people don't. Um, there are pros and cons, but I generally try to store things inside that geodatabase. Look, here's my state plane TIFF. I've named it something different than my unregistered TIFF. So now I'm going to take a look at the spatial information, the cell sizes, the projection, the spatial reference system, and so on. Just a good idea to check things when you're through with your geoprocessing. And this goes for a general good practice in your GIS workflows. Then it's also a good idea to save your map, your project inside um, ArcGIS Pro when you're doing any sort of projection or any running of any tool really. In sum, you project your base information to the projection that you wish to use. You add your unregistered, unrectified image or map and you then use the georeferencing toolbar fit to display and add your control points, check your coordinates, check your resulting table, save or save as, and you're done.